Hello, everybody. Um, thank you for that introduction. I appreciate it. Um, I should be here more often. My name is Carmen Adame. I am a product marketing manager here at Precisely um, and very focused on location intelligence and uh, geo addressing. Um, Colin? Hi, everybody. I'm Colin Madison. I'm a solution engineering manager here at Precisely, also very focused on all things location intelligence, geo addressing, and enrichment. Nice to speak with you all. So uh, let me get things started. Um, one of the things that, um, you know, sometimes we forget is that in reality, working with addresses is really hard. Addresses are actually very complex. Um, in the U.S., addresses have 13 different attributes. This really expands when we start looking at the globe and how different countries um, really um, attribute their addresses. We're looking at hundreds, about 300 different attributes for an address uh, around the world. And you know there are all of these ideas that addresses are unique, which they're not. Um, sometimes addresses haven't been totally validated um, sometimes uh, an address doesn't exist in a map. It doesn't um, have a, it's not a deliverable location. Um, sometimes it hasn't been geocoded. Sometimes a business has multiple addresses. So there's all of these things that really are complex about an address. And so we need addresses in our lives. And um, you know, they are extremely important to the work that we do every day and how we relate to just everything around us, right? Between getting the mail, getting parcels delivered, getting services to our places, being able to understand, you know, where in a map we might be located. And so this is the complexity that addresses really present to us. And at Precisely, we have gotten extremely good. Um, you know, Alex called Mike the Michael Jordan of addresses. But in reality, it's because we have done the work and put in the effort of understanding the nuances and the complexities that addresses bring to our daily lives and how we relate to them and how we can bring them into our systems and then into our businesses to make our life um, you know, much easier. So I'm going to now let Colin tell us a little bit about what geoaddressing is and why we consider geoaddressing important. Thank you, Carmen. Uh, let me jump ahead. So, yeah, inputting addresses into uh, operation is not only a core competency of our organization, it's also an area where we're a global leader. And we call it geo addressing, and I'll kind of break down what that means. So, our geo addressing and data enrichment solutions enable organizations of all sizes to increase the use of address data and quickly associate rich, relevant contextual information. So geo-addressing consolidates the capabilities from our world-class geocoding and address verification into a single solution. And the results are faster, more confident decision-making, preventing bad addresses from coming into your system, which Mike's going to touch on a little bit later. Um, address verification, the first, the first uh, icon you can see there, is the process of confirming the accuracy of postal information, parsing, standardizing, normalizing, and verifying the address elements uh, and that's ca a capability globally. Um, what is available location, you might be asking? So the postal authority does not deliver to every physical location, and so that's where things, geocoding comes in. Um, you know, there, there may be a shared delivery box if you live in a neighborhood where you know, you've seen those boxes with 20 or 50 or 100, um, uh, you know, uh, mailboxes. Um, you know, those, those are situations. There's also rural areas where uh, the mail gets delivered to the street. You know, the highway. Um, and people have to drive down 5, 10, 20 miles to get their mail. Um, and that kind of takes us to the next capability, which is geocoding. And that is the process of transforming location information, like an address, into location coordinates. And also the capability to do that in reverse, which would be called reverse geocoding. Um, so that's the uh, physical location, finding the physical, loca physical location of the address. And it's important to note that not all addresses actually have a physical location. Um, some exist only for... Um, mailing purposes or for getting things across. Uh, an example I like to give when I was stationed in Germany in the you know, US military, I had an APO AE zip code, which looks like a New York zip code, but that was you know to get me letters from my parents, care gifts over to Germany. Um, 
The next example, uh, the next kind of component is the address autocomplete. This has a lot of different names. You may have heard of it called type ahead. That's a kind of a common or a older version of it. There's interactive, predict, um, autocomplete, geocomplete. What these all fundamentally are is they perform a search as you're typing in keystrokes and they retrieve a list of places by the input text um, and the location vicinity. So address autocomplete takes in freeform text and provides back relevant uh, suggestions. So with that, I'll jump ahead to the next slide and we'll take a look at some examples. So here we can see verifying addresses in more than 250 countries and territories. Uh, the way this is done is using some sophisticated matching algorithms to pull the most accurate address verification across countries, language sets, and character sets. You know, there's a lot of nuances as you go, you know, expand this globally. Uh, addresses are verified per delivery requirements according to the specified country, and we follow the United, you know, the, sorry, the Universal Postal Union's um, standardization, so the UPU, to ensure that that uh, you know those meet the needs of every country that we work with. Uh, in the top example that you see there, we can see an alias address for the Melissa Valley Mall in Las Cruces, New Mexico. It's being standardized to the appropriate street number and street name as well as identifying the city and state based on the postal code. So this is showing that that algorithm is teasing out the right location using some of the information that's been input. In the example on the bottom right-hand side, you can see uh, an even better version of this where there's very little information that's given. It's a uh, one, 100, number one at 10025. And we're able to you know, process that, tease that out and identify the city and state as well as the, um, the city and state as well as the street in New York, being able to standardize that and make that a useful piece of information. So this gives you some examples. You know, real world people are typing things in. You know, much of the time they type things in that don't look like addresses. That's where the software comes in to really, um, you know, help clean that up. The next, uh, let me jump to the next one. Um, geocoding is a two-step process, and the first step is really interpreting an input address and matching it to an address in a reference data set. And so the robustness and the comprehensiveness of that reference data set is really important. The second step is converting that address into a location on Earth in the form of latitude and longitude. For some use cases, getting to the right city or postal code um, is sufficient. It's The positional accuracy is not really important if you're just trying to get a general sense of an area. However, when the use case is insuring million dollar homes, knowing how close that house is to a river for flooding risk or to a forest for wildfire risk is really critical. So, you know, being close isn't close enough. In telecommunication scenarios, there's often, you know, this building out of new capacity, new network, new fiber, new lines. That's a really expensive investment. And so they need to know how many units are in a commercial you know, or a residential complex, because if something has 10 apartments versus a thousand, you know, there's very different costs and decisions that are made. So those really drive decisions, knowing where to build and where not to build, you know, they're not going to see an ROI. And then there's also completing deliveries to customers. You know, residential houses may seem easy. I'll tell you they're not. There's a lot of challenges there. But there's also new use cases where we see people being asked to deliver to a construction site or something that doesn't truly, you know, isn't an address yet or doesn't really um, meet the kind of standard needs. And that's where that reverse geocoding comes in. So in addition to being able to handle geocoding, the reverse geocoding is turning a latitude and longitude into an address. And you're probably asking, what does that look like? If you've ever had to move a point on an app you know, to say, pick me up here or drop off here, or you're trying to input your apartment or your house to say, to rent it on um, you know, a, a rental place and they put your address 100 feet or 500 feet away, you might move that pin. So moving that pin is that reverse geocoding. We're able to help with those kinds of use cases, those interactive use cases as well. So advanced geoaddressing is well equipped to support automated decision making and in-depth analysis by generating and delivering various metadata. This information may include insights into how well the input address matched the reference data, the type of point returned and its level of positional accuracy. Another type of metadata is a unique and persistent identifier, an attached to an address, not a location. This identifier can be used to quickly obtain the address in the future even if the location of the address or the address itself changes. And postal codes change all the time. So that's where you know, the address changes, but the location truly doesn't. So it's important to just note that. Um, 
This can also improve operational processes between systems or companies and even unlock further information from additional data files or APIs. Metadata about primary and secondary relationships between locations, such as suites within an office building, can save you countless hours of research. An important thing to mention here, the Precisely ID both exists for that 100 Main Street. There's also children with their own unique identifiers for all those suite units at that same location, which gives you that capability. So this metadata can really speed up uh, analytical processes by revealing previously unknown relationships between location-related data. The Precisely ID can also be used to quickly join Precisely's complete catalog of data, allowing you to append an additional 9,000 attributes to an address to reveal things like environmental and crime risk, property characteristics, the demographics of the area, if there are businesses that happen to be in that location, or if someone has a home business, it might be located there as well. Uh, additionally, many clients run their other third-party data sets and their own first-party data sets through the geo-addressing service to simplify joining their address-based data using that key. It really unlocks a lot of additional value when you're trying to do analytics, um, any sort of machine learning modeling. You need clean data and you need it all to be linked up. And this gives that capability to take and add additional value to all the other data that you're already potentially leveraging and licensing. Uh, in addition to metadata, I wanted to hit on two other key factors to investigate as you do look at new geo-addressing solutions. The first of those is going to be throughput of the solution. How many records per unit of time need to be run? For analytical use cases, you could probably run a batch overnight and that would be fine. But if you're trying to make sure someone can quickly check out or order food or order, you know, um, you know close off of a, a website, you want to make that experience really fast. So in those cases, you want to really understand, do I need real time? Do I need sub-second processing? Make sure you're kind of evaluating that as you're looking at, at your at geo-addressing solutions. And then lastly is how you deploy your geo-addressing solution. Do you want to run this natively in a Databricks environment in your private cloud, or would you prefer an API? Make sure you kind of understand if there's flexibility in how you deploy that. So then lastly, we wanted to touch on the address autocomplete. And this allows you to put governance and quality practices in place to prevent bad addresses from entering your ecosystem. I'm human and I make typing mistakes all the time. So are your customers and users. But tailored experience is important for several to several of your other business needs. More relevant address suggestions empower confidence in your decisions. You'll be able to capture the right address in real time thanks to the smart autocomplete features that return a suggested list of complete addresses. And it's important to note, the way our autocomplete works, it's only feeding addresses that we've verified and, and validated and you know, are sourcing. So it's not bringing in any sort of um, other information. It's only going to be looking at, at known addresses that exist. And this capability you know, is really powerful because it, with which is partial keystrokes, it fills in the rest of the address so that people are able to get a correct location immediately. And this is really important for local search, for checkout, for shipping, for billing. I didn't mention tax, also making sure that you're charging the right tax and paying the right tax to the local authorities. Having the right address is really important for that. So a complete geo-addressing solution ensures that your organization is capturing high quality address and location information about your customer, which streamlines and automates business processes. This leads to more deliveries of products and services arriving on time the first time. It ensures you're collecting the right taxes and it allows you to scale to allow you to quickly move your offerings, expand your offerings to new markets. And then using a unique and persistent address ID makes your first and third party data easily linkable, driving incremental value and opening additional use cases and, and, and analysis for your operations. Um, with that, I'll pass it back. I believe I'm passing it back to you, Carmen. Yes, I was taking a look at one of the polls that came out and it was talking about if you've heard about precisely and who precisely is. Um, so let me answer that question. At Precisely, we are the leaders of data integrity. We understand really that data is the number one factor that we care about. In this case, we're talking about addressing and addressing data and all of that data that gets connected to that type of address. And our unique combination of software data and our strategic services helps ensure that we are delivering trusted data to our, to our customers. Um, we want to ensure that the data is accurate, that it is consistent, and that it is contextual, meaning that it's going to be relevant to them, and it's going to help them answer those business questions that they have. 
Um, we have decades of domain expertise. I know that the name of Precisely might be relatively new, uh, but we have been in the industry for um, close to 70 years. We have 12,000 12, customers worldwide. We have 99 of those Fortune 100s, and we have over 2,500 employees across the, across the world. Um, we are focused on data integrity and the journey of data integrity. I know that uh, Colin right now mentioned, you know, being able to bring in data, connecting it with your systems like Snowflake, creating things like data governance and putting rules in place to ensure that your address is correct. And that data journey really is complex. Everybody's starting in a different place and everybody has different needs. And so whether you're generating the data or integrating the data all the way to being able to analyzing and monitoring that data, we try to partner with you um, and ensuring that you, know, you have everything that you need to manage your data integrity. And that is a that that journey isn't really going to end, right? You you manage something, you fix something, and then you have to move into managing, fixing something else, or ensuring that you have all of the pieces in place to make accurate business decisions. And so that is what precisely is focused in, and that is what we do. And we work with many of the world's most trusted brands. So in different sectors throughout uh, financial services or manufacturing. So you know, if you look at some of the brands here, I am pretty sure that you recognize them all over the world. Um, our data and our services and our strategic services and our software is used um, really, you know, to manage most of the data that is passing throughout like all of our all of the systems that you interact with. And so we're really proud of that. Um, you know, we have the expertise and uh, the knowledge and the people that are truly going to help you understand um, your addressing and provide you with addressing solutions that are going to be impactful for you and your business. Mm -hmm.